Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be presenting you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time represents the average amount of time you should be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. Once the time is up, I'll be giving you an answer as well as a treatment. Good luck. Three, two, one. So for this static cardiology card, you're given a hospital style 12 lead. Let's take a look at lead two along the bottom to see if we can identify this rhythm. Now right away, you're probably noticing that this is very, very fast. Now because your 12 lead ECGs are 10 second rhythm strips, to make the math easier, it's best to first cut this into a six second strip and then multiply whatever QRS complexes we count by 10. To make this into a six second strip, what I'll do is I'll take each two and a half second segment knowing that this is five seconds total, and then I'll add five additional large boxes to make my six seconds. From here, I'll count up my QRS complexes, multiply this number by 10, and determine my rate. So I'm counting 18 complexes, so I'll take that and multiply by 10, and I get 180. Now that I know the rate, let's take a look at the actual rhythm strip to see if I can't determine what this is. So I'm examining my QRS complexes here and I'm noticing that they're very, very narrow. I don't see a discernible P wave anywhere and my R to R interval is very, very consistent. Because this is so regular, I can't determine if there's any P wave present and I have a narrow QRS. My rhythm diagnosis is going to be SVT or supraventricular tachycardia. Let's now take a look at each individual lead grouping to see if we can't find anything more malignant or anything more wrong with this rhythm. In examining the anterior leads, this is where I prefer to start Vs 1 through V4. I'm not seeing any ST segment elevation. I am, however, seeing ST depression in V3 and V4. Let's take a look now at the inferior leads. In my inferior leads, which are 2, 3, and AVF, I'm not seeing any sort of ST segment elevation, but I'm seeing, once again, segment depression in all of our leads here. Let's now take a look at the lateral leads. In my lateral leads, I'm once again seeing ST segment depression, but because I'm seeing this globally, this is a whole heart problem. So what I'm seeing here is likely uh, rate-related ischemia, as in the heart is beating so quickly that it doesn't have time to fully refill, and thus the actual coronary uh, blood supply is impacted. This global rate-related ischemia will normalize once we get the rate under control. And this is true of any tachycardic rhythm. After looking at the lead groupings more closely, I'm not going to change my diagnosis of SVT. Now it is report important to remember, however, that you should not diagnose SVT based on rate alone. There are 
countless other tachycardic rhythms that can exist at speeds that we would associate with SVT. So you do have to look at the different factors that play into making this diagnosis of SVT. And those things are regular R to R interval, so perfectly regular pattern, narrow QRS complexes, usually, and no real difference between a P and a T wave complex. They're sort of molded into one, just big amalgamous wave. So these are the reasons that I'm, I'm using to diagnose this as SVT. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the scenario and determine if this patient is stable or unstable. So we're dispatched out to a private residence for a 27 year old male complaining of palpitations, sort of that feeling of heart racing. The patient denies any discomfort or shortness of breath. You obtain the following vital signs, blood pressure of 184 over 102, pulse rate of 172, respirations are 19, SpO2 is 99% on room air, and his blood glucose is 122. Because points are scored in static cardiology based on correct treatment, you do have to choose the correct ACLS algorithm when you're treating your patients. For stable versus unstable, I use the criteria CHAD. And this of course stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration of mental status, and dyspnea. Based on this patient's complaints, physical presentation, and vital signs, this patient does not meet any of the criteria for CHAD, so is therefore stable. My final diagnosis for static cardiology is a stable SVT. Let's now look at the treatment. All static cardiology treatment will begin by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IV, O2, monitor. Next, we'll ask the patient to vagal, or we'll attempt a vagal maneuver, and you can do this with a variety of different methods. You can have the patient bear down like they're having a bowel movement. You can use my personal favorite of handing them an empty 10cc syringe and asking them to blow the plunger out of it. I find that if you offer the patient a challenge, they're more likely to actually vagal down. Next thing we'll do is medication, because this is a stable patient. We're going to do adenosine, six milligrams, given rapid IV push. The next dose will be adenosine, 12 milligrams. Again, rapid IV push. We'll then move on to a calcium channel blocker like diltiazem. The dose for this is going to be 0.25 to 0.35 milligrams per kilogram, slower IV push. And then finally, we could consider using a beta blocker like metoprolol, atenolol, or labetalol. The beta blockers aren't used to treat the patient's high blood pressure, but instead are used to help reduce the heart rate. And then finally, of course, rapid transport. All right, and that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology videos. And remember to make your own playlists using my static cardiology cards so you can build your own decks to practice with for your national registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.